hello and welcome to Anglicare Church to you. And a special warm welcome to our friends in rural areas. My name is Cathy Donnelly, Anglicare's Aboriginal Liaison Coordinator. There are many reasons why people can't get to church, like immobility, distance or sickness. Or maybe you can no longer venture out of your home. And we're also very conscious that many people in remote country areas sometimes can't get to church. So Anglicare wants to bring church to you. Today's service is led by Rhys Old with a sermon from Matt Olive, two of Anglicare's chaplains. The Bible reading tells us about the men who were crucified next to Jesus and the wonderful changes God made in one of them. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Thank you. everybody to our service of Holy Communion today. We're so glad that you can join with us. If you have access to one of our Anglicare service cards, our service is found on the gold card entitled A Service of Holy Communion. Today we're going to be hearing from God's Word by reading the Bible and we're going to be praying to God together. We will sing praises to God and confess our sins to him. We will remember Jesus' death and resurrection by celebrating Holy Communion together. We start our time of praise, proclamation and prayer with our first hymn. Please stand as we sing together. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood?
We will now prepare ourselves for our time of hearing God's word by praying together the prayer of preparation. If you have the gold service of Holy Communion card, our prayer is at point one. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. At point two on our service cards, we come to the two great commandments. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. A second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so we say together, Lord, have mercy on us and write your law in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. We are now going to have the Bible reading. Our Bible reading today comes from the essential Jesus. Luke chapter 23, verses 32 to 43. Two others, who were criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on Jesus' right, the other on his left. And the soldiers divided his clothing by placing bets, and the people stood by watching. The leaders even made fun of him, saying, He rescued others. Let him rescue himself, if he really is God's Christ, his chosen one. The soldiers also ridiculed him, coming up and offering him bitter wine. They said, If you really are the king of the Jews, rescue yourself. There was a placard above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there was abusing Jesus, saying, Aren't you supposed to be the Christ? Rescue yourself and us. But the other criminal responded with a rebuke, Have you no fear of God? After all, you are under the same death sentence. Yet here we are justly. We are receiving what we deserve for our actions, but he has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. We will now have the sermon. Well, welcome to church today. Our beloved nation still continues to remember its Christian history. And so we get public holiday called Good Friday. We remember together the day that Jesus died he organised for us a public holiday and we call it Good Friday. Now we in Australia value our public holidays, perhaps because they're being whittled away. But we still celebrate Good Friday. But I want to ask the question, what's so good about Good Friday? We've just had a reading from Luke's Gospel. Luke, a first century researcher and historian, has recorded these events for us. These are the events that tell us what makes Good Friday good. But at first glance, Good Friday ain't so good. It seems like the first Good Friday was a day that actually brought out the very worst of humans. Jealous plotting, conspiracy, miscarriage of justice, mockery and abuse, torture and death, and violent judicial murder. At first glance, Good Friday is not so good. Now, Matthew and Mark record for us that both criminals we read about 
mocked Jesus as they hung next to him. But as is Luke's want, he records for us something extra, something that the other gospel writers do not, because Luke loves to record for us God's love for the outcast, the rejected, the sinner. And it is only Luke's gospel who tells us of this dying man who met the Messiah in the midst of his own mockery. Both criminals who were crucified next to Jesus entered into their last hours mocking the Son of God. One of them repented. At some point during his mortal agony, the man we read about today, this condemned and dying criminal, changed his mind about Jesus. He also changed his mind about himself. And so Luke tells us what no other gospel writer tells us, that one criminal repented, while the other criminal continued in his mockery. The repentant criminal said this, "'Have you no fear of God?' he said to his fellow. "'After all, you are under the same death sentence, "'yet here we are punished justly. "'We are receiving what we deserve for our actions, "'but this man, Jesus, has done nothing wrong.'" This repentant criminal stopped justifying himself, stopped blaming the world and our society, his parents, whatever he thought he could blame, he takes responsibility, he fesses up and says, what's happening to me is just. I deserved it. I deserve to be tortured and executed in this barbaric way. Fascinating, isn't it? He changed his mind about himself and he changed his mind about Jesus and that's what repentance is. And friends, we too need to change our minds about ourselves for we're under the same sentence as this condemned criminal we read about. We too are under the sentence of death. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. Why do we die? Because we sin. And of course, there is something worse than death. For Jesus warns us about hell and judgment. That is because we are not good. Jesus himself says in Luke's gospel, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. None of us are righteous. We're all sinners in need of salvation. They say that there's nothing like a deadline to focus the mind. And this criminal, in looking at his oncoming death, says we are being punished justly, we are getting what our deeds deserve. But that dying man also saw something else on that first Good Friday. Not only did he see his own guilt and sin, not only did he see Jesus' innocence, but through the blood and mockery and nudity, he saw something else. Jesus was a king. He saw Jesus' glo glory in the midst of that gory scene. And he says to Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's a miracle upon miracles. The dying criminal realizes that Jesus is in fact king. But for Jesus, there was no crown without a cross. There is no glory without the shame of the cross. And this criminal seemed to understand this was able to look beyond what his eyes saw in this bleeding, dying man, the Lord Jesus Christ, and saw the face of God. Christians believe that this brutal condemnation of Jesus 2,000 years ago is the only way of salvation. Others in our society believe it's an idiotic message believed by idiotic preachers. What about you? Is this a message of salvation for you? Are you someone who, like this condemned criminal, sees the glory of Christ in his cross and sees beyond what his eyes see but looks to Jesus with the eye of faith? If so, then you need to pay very close attention to what Jesus says to this dying criminal. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, 
Today you will be with me in paradise. What awaits this sinful dying wretch who deserved to get everything he got as he was crucified? What awaits him? Paradise. Notice today. Notice who it's with. Jesus. Today you will be with me in paradise. And friends, this is the hope for all, for all who see that Jesus is the Christ and put their trust in his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of their sins. Here is a deathbed conversion. Well, he wasn't on a bed, but here is a, a deathbed conversion. The penitent thief showed true repentance. True repentance can be late, but be warned, it said that late repentance is seldom true. So why don't you repent now and avoid the last minute rush? Are your sins scarlet? With Jesus, they will be whiter than snow. Are they more than the hairs of your head? With Jesus, they are put behind God's back. Are your sins a burden too great for you to bear? With Jesus, that burden rolls away and we have rest and forgiveness. May you know that this Good Friday. Amen. We are now going to sing a hymn. Our next hymn is Hallelujah, What a Saviour. Affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. These are the things that Christians have believed for the last 2,000 years. So let's say these words together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to a time of prayer where we will pray for ourselves, our community, and the world. Firstly, a prayer for all people. God of love, make your way known to the people of our world, your saving power among all nations. Guide and govern your church by your Holy Spirit so that all who call themselves Christians may be led in the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are afflicted or distressed in body, mind, or circumstances. Relieve them according to their needs. Give them patience in their sufferings and deliverance from their afflictions. This we ask for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. A prayer for love. Lord, you have taught us that all our works without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. A prayer for God's direction and rule. Loving God, without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for all in authority. Almighty God, ruler of the nations of the earth, give wisdom to the Prime Minister of Australia and to the members of Parliament and to all who hold office in this land. Grant that their decisions may be based on wise counsel so that peace and welfare, truth and justice may prevail among us and make us a blessing to other nations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for peace. God of the nations, whose sovereign rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Establish your peace in the hearts of all and banish from them the spirit that makes for war so that all nations and peoples may learn to live as members of one family and in obedience to your laws through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the aged. Lord God, look with mercy on all for whom age and frailty bring isolation and distress. Give them understanding helpers and the willingness to receive what is offered. As their strength diminishes, increase their faith and their assurance of your love. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for the spread of the gospel. We praise you, Lord of all, for the gifts of Christ, our ascended King, for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Hear our prayer for all who do not know your love and have not heard the gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Send out your light and truth through the messengers of your word. Help us to support them by our prayers and offerings and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, you have given us grace to agree in these our prayers and have promised that when two or three ask together in your name, you will grant their requests. 
Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us. Grant us in this life knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life eternal. Amen. Our next hymn is May the Mind of Christ My Saviour. We are the people of God, but the scriptures remind us that we still sin. We need to confess our sins to God, knowing that God freely forgives us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So please pray this prayer of confession with me. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, We acknowledge with shame the sins we have committed by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for all our misdoings. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that from this time forward we may serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is rich in mercy and forgives our sins when we confess them to him. We read this promise from 1 John chapter 2. I write this to you, so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defence, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. As we come to celebrate Holy Communion together, hear the words of assurance for those who truly turn to Christ. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
from John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. From 1 Timothy, chapter 1. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And from 1 John chapter 2, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins. We will now pray the prayer of humble access together at point seven on the service outline. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. All glory and honour, thanks and praise be yours now and always, Lord, Holy Father, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, Father, we pray that we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, according to our Saviour's word, may be partakers of his body and blood. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, his almighty Father, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving thanks to you, He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ Christ is is risen. risen. Christ Christ will come again. again. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful. Amen. Sometimes Christians cannot receive the sacrament of Jesus' body and blood when they are sick or when they don't have others with whom they can share communion. God calls us all to genuinely repent of our sins and steadfastly believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our redemption. 
So we all must remember the great benefits that everyone who repents of their sins and believes in the gospel receives from Jesus' death and thank him for them. Every believer who repents and believes truly eats and drinks the body and blood of our Saviour Christ so that they are saved. They truly eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus by believing in Him in their hearts, even though they haven't received the bread and wine with their mouths in the sacrament of Holy Communion. As we finish Communion, let me pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who in the spirit lights give light to the world. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We finish our service with this blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ, Christ. Amen. amen. God bless you all. We stand as we sing together. Guide me, O oh, thou great Jehovah.
My name's Andrew Ford, General Manager for Mission Partnerships at Anglicare. God tells us in the Bible not to give up meeting together, but to encourage one another until the day when Jesus returns. We need each other. We need to encourage each other to trust Jesus and to live for him. That's one reason why we have church services and chapel each week in each of our homes. And we have a chaplain and pastoral carers. Meeting face to face, whether one on one or in groups, is important. And I want to encourage you to continue to meet and encourage one another. But you and I know there are sometimes good reasons why we cannot meet face to face. It might be sickness or immobility or other reasons that make, it, make us unable to gather together. And for these times, your chaplains have made available some televised services. We call it Anglicare Church to You. We hope and pray that this will encourage you with God's word and with prayer. These short televised programs don't replace our weekly face-to-face -face meetings. They are meant to be an additional resource of encouragement at times when we want to but we cannot meet together for church. Of course, your chaplain is also available at these times of restricted access. If you need them, don't hesitate to contact them or ask. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.